Okay, um, this work is, was done with the collaboration of uh, <coughs> Shai Sela, uh, Tal, Shmuel, and uh, Gabi Katul. Um, the outline is that uh, first a short introduction to the Lavim LTR, then uh, what is the gap between models and uh, field observation, um, the introduction about the model that I will use, and how we model the water loss uh, parameter in this model um, due to evaporation and drainage using the soil depth database and the Hydros 1D model. Uh, the result for five years, discussion and then uh, conclusion and suggestions for future study. Lavim uh, LTR, we heard uh, yesterday and the day before, uh, is located um, just uh, 10 kilometers from here. Uh, the, the landscape is a uh, shrubland dominated by uh, S. Spinozum. Uh, we see here a, a picture. There is a, the shrubs and a, a, a bare soil patch between them. It, it is very hard to, to, hard to say what is the, the pattern here, is it sports or labyrinth or... Um, and this is the, the area, the LTER, um, that we work on. Uh, this is the landscape on uh, February this year. Uh, we see the, the annuals between the, the shrubs. This is a, a road that go up. There is a, a, a grazing in this area. And uh, the annual rainfall is quite variable because we are in a semi-arid area. And there is a data of uh, 24 years. We see that it, it can be very high up to 572. And then there is a drought that uh, Tal spoke about this. And uh, in this simulation, uh, in this talk, I will use this data of the five uh, first year, uh, it, it is an on ongoing study, so it's only in the beginning. Um, so what is the aim of the work? Uh, most of the, the models of pattern formation, uh, all the parameters are uniform and fixed. So, but we know that the, the the ecological system is quite heterogeneity uh, uh, in all the physical parameters like soil depth. Uh, there are stone, rocks, so it's much more complicated. So how this heterogeneity uh, influences the vegetation growth and pattern? Uh, how to take into account this heterogeneity in space and time variability? in a mathematical model of veget vegetation in water-limited system. And is the high resolution of temporal and spatial modeling is really important for understanding the system beha behavior. So the model uh, we choose is the model of Max from 2002. Um, it's, it's more simple than the model of, uh, of a wood because there is no uh, uh, root augmentation feedback. There are three uh, uh, dynamic variables. P is the biomass density. Uh, w is the soil water. And uh, H is the surface water. And we add to this, the, to the original uh, there is uh, one E missing here. We added this uh, uh, term that is um, from Kefi 2010, that um, not all the water may infiltrate into the soil, so this, this term is a um, um, surface water uh, loss term. So we add this because it's um, the system become, there is a, a bi-stability of a bare soil and pattern uh, uh, solution. So what is uh, 
the the vegeta the the ve the most important thing here is that the feedback is the infiltration feedback. Uh, this term I will show later, and we concentrate in this term. This is the uh, water, the surface water uh, loss due to evaporation and drainage, and the, the, the this coefficient parameter R W. I will we will try to to better uh, describe it. So <coughs> the infiltration uh, feedback I would talk about this. Uh, it accelerates the vegetation growth, sharpens the infiltra infiltration contrast between vegetation and bare soil, and it model it, it is modeled in the in the model by the term this term. And this is the plant density. This is the water infiltration into the soil. Without uh, without plant, this is the bare soil. And it saturates when the uh, plant density increases. And W0 is a measure of the infiltration contra contrast between vegetated and bare soil. It's a parameter between 0 and 1. Uh, the plant water uptake term. Uh, this is the soil water availability, and this is the plant water uptake. And it's where there is more soil availability, it grows and saturates. Uh, soil depth can be expressed in the model in several parameters. Uh, it can express in alpha and W0 that uh, model the infiltration term, and also in this RW that uh, uh, quantity that uh, this is the evaporation term. So if RW is high, then the loss to evaporation drainage is high. So we choose to 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 take into account this term. The model has many parameters, and uh, the system that we work, I don't say that we know all the parameters. It, it is very hard. This is one of the, I think, the most challenging thing to take such a model and to uh, adjust it to a real system. We are very far away from this point. <coughs> the model uh, has uh, the same sequence of universal uh, um, uh, patterns. Bare soil, spot, uh, stripes, labyrinth, and gap, and the, this is the <coughs> the abrupt shift from a, a from a vegetated pattern to uh, to the bare soil. Uh, this is the a, a well published uh, model, but all this um, analysis is for a uniform parameters. So everything is changed now if we use a parameters that change in time and in space. Uh, I use these parameters, and this is the, um, uh, the, the refrigeration diagram of the vegetated pattern for two values of alpha. This is the um, uh, rainfall. <coughs> in millimeter per day. This is the, bio, the biomass density in, in gram per meter squared. And the idea is to use the uh, tremendous work that have done in LAVIM LTR. Uh, all the, the data of the soil death in all the, um, in all the, in all the area. And um, uh, blue color is uh, a high, uh, is a, a deep layer of uh, soil, and the red color are a shallow layer. And actually, I took only one plot of all this area. It's 25 by 25 meters. And this is the map of the soil depth. This is the uh, vegetation uh, pattern in this uh, plot. So we use 25 by 25 meters, only one plot of all this area. 
to model the, we use the model in this, in this plot. So RW is a specific soil water loss due to evaporation and drainage, and it strongly depends on soil depth and water content in the, especially in arid environment where the rainfall is in pulses. We use the data soil depth measurement and hydros 1D to calculate the daily values of RW in each one of the cells. So uh, we use the Moale uh, Medosulin model. We heard the, the lecture of uh, Shmuel yesterday. So this is uh, <coughs> uh, the soil depth. The two first centime two centimeters uh, are crust, physical crust, and uh, <coughs> this sea layer is uh, modeled by um, um, hydraulic conductivity of uh, 0 0.66 centimeter per hour, and the other undisturbed soil is much higher uh, so, uh, hydraulic conductivity. Um, we use this, uh, this uh, scheme in, okay, we know that uh, the sea layer reduces both infiltration and evaporation fluxes from the soil. And we took all this into the 1D idols model and com com calculated the, um, the mean value of RW. That now it depends on each one of the cells and it's different for, from day to day because of the rain. And this calculation had, uh, had been done by Shai. So now the, the, uh, the IDOS 1D model solves the Richard's equation and we assume that the, it's a flat and all the other parameters like uh, radiation, solar radiation, everything is constant uh, except of the soil depth. So what is the, what we have done? Uh, we took the rainfall data, uh, put it into the hydros model, calculated now the RW parameter is dependent on X and Y and T. So it's a matrix that changes from day to day. We took this um, um, RW, put it in the model, in the equations, and then get the, the pattern. So the daily rainfall uh, during the five years, it, it changed from season to season and there is a um, period without rain and then showers of rain like 50 millimeters and even uh, 80 millimeters in one day. So it changed quite abruptly from year to year and from uh, week to week, month to month. The, the mean annual precipitation is here. So in the first year it's 275 and uh, next is uh, Five and thirty-two, and the the first challenge was to uh, okay. Th this is the the daily change of uh, RW at a specific site in the plot for the this is seventy-eight to seventy-nine, and you see that uh, it this is a, a pulse, and then the RW change. There is a decay uh, in the day. Where is uh, it was raining, RW is zero. This is by, we took it by definition. Uh, this is the map of the uh, average in each one of the year. So uh, we see that uh, in the rainy year, we don't see the, the difference between the, the soil depth compared to a, a year with a lower uh, rainfall that we see that the map, this is the, the soil map, uh, um, the soil map depth, so we see that uh, it's more correlate in, uh, in a rain year. This is the average uh, values of uh, RW. It's, it's very, it's quite very small because of the, of the sea layer. 
it's much, much more smaller than the one that uh, Max and Sonia uses in the model. Um, so this, these are the, the, the averages uh, of RW. Uh, this is the precipitation, and these are the years. And it also changed because of the rain, interannual distribution. We see here that these two years are with the same precipitation, but the average of RW is it's quite different. Okay, in order to test the, the, um, the influence of RW, we used six scenarios. Um, DD is, we changed uh, RW in space and time daily, and the rainfall is daily. AD, we took the, minual, the, the mean annual value of uh, spatial and temporal average. So it's one, uh, here RW is one value that change from one year, from year to year, and uh, the rainfall is daily. Uh, SPD is annual spatial average, so RW is, uh, um, is 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 the average of the s in in the in, in one year, but it changed from place to place, uh, and um, the rainfall is daily. Uh, here we took the the annual spatial average, and also the rain average, um, and this scenario, five a five a. Mean value, mean value of uh, five years, and the rainfall is the mean value. So thi this one corresponds to the uh, one value of RW and, va and uh, uniform rainfall. So all these scenarios are, are to, to check, to study what, if, if this is important or not. Uh, we see here the <coughs> the average, uh, this is the precipitation in the first year. Uh, the average soil water content uh, and the average surface water. So first I adjust the parameter that this surface water will follow uh, the, the rainfall event because the, we have uh, surface water only <coughs> very shortly after the, the rainfall. So what are the results? Uh, the initial condition was well sp um, <coughs> spot with uh, mature, mature spot and random uh, distribution. And then we see and the system start without water. So after the first year, the, there is a decay of the, the spot and then it start to uh, grow. And we see that uh, this is an uh, irregular pattern. Um, there is also rocks inside, and where there is a rocks, there is no infiltration, and no vegetation can grow. So it's much more uh, look natural. Uh, we see that the soil depth, um, we can observe the, the influence of the soil Soil depth only in the um, the year where uh, the rain is is low, like uh, 80 to 80, 81. So in a rainy year, we, we cannot observe the the influence of the soil depth. Uh, these are the final pattern after five years in the different scenario. Uh, we see that the, it's quite similar, uh, but there are, there are differences. And uh, in order to, to study the <laughs> we can see that um, none of them show the, um, the soil de depth uh, map. We cannot observe it. Uh, but in, in a dry year, when the precipitation was two, two, 278, 
we can see here that uh, we, um, in the DD pattern, in the DD, DD scenario, when we take, we took daily uh, precipitation and daily change of RW, we can observe that here the vegetation is much more uh, wealthy than on the other side. Uh, this is the bio biomass density cross section. Uh, the pattern is the same, but the, the amplitude of the, uh, the biomass change from one scenario to the other. Uh, this is, a, in a, I concentrate in the two, this two uh, scenario. So what is the difference between, if I take the, the, the annual average of RW, uh, and this is for the, the last year, uh, the surface water is the same, but the, the soil water, we see that uh, in the DD is, uh, is a little bit higher than the uh, AD. Uh, the biomass density is also higher because it's, uh, this is the yearly total biomass between uh, the six different scenarios. Um, we see that uh, the DD and the AD are very close. So in the average total biomass, I can say from this fir first five years of simulation that you can take the average of the soil depth and not use the RW from one year to year. But if you want to, to see the details, you need to take the, uh, the daily change. Uh, and this is the, um, the one that take rainfall uniform and RW uniform. And we see that it's much quite different from the other one. And the, the maximum biomass density has the same pattern. Uh, this is the, the, the yearly average of soil water. Um, and these are the, the details of the difference because here we, take, we took the, the average. So the DD, it, this is the average loss, loss water. Uh, the, 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 the loss water is higher in the DD <coughs> because it corresponds to uh, better to the, to the rainfall compared to, to the one that I take the average. Uh, the main result is that in rainy year, we don't see much difference between the two scenario. Uh, but in, this is in the dry year, this is the DD minus AD, this is the biomass density. We see here that uh, there is less vegetation in the DD scenario, the white, the white uh, spot. And in the soil water, there are also less water here uh, than in the rainy year. Uh, okay, I will skip this. Uh, the, we have done also simulation with a smaller value of alpha, so there are, there are less uh, infiltration uh, water in the soil. And with a smaller value of alpha, we see that the soil depth is much more influenced the pattern. We see that all this part now is bare, bare soil uh, compared to, this is with alpha, 0.4, and this is with, with alpha 0.2, and we see the, the difference between the two. So uh, when the conditions are worse, uh, the soil depth is more important. Uh, so the conclusion, the effect of soil depth is more significant in dry years than in rainy years and may create open soil patches. Uh, patches with shallow soil depth are less resilient to drought. The average behavior after five years, taking mean uh, soil depth, 
with daily rainfall is similar to that with full database, although the exact pattern is different. Uh, the ongoing study is run the simulation for more years. Uh, we have the data for 34 years. Uh, use Hydro's 1D to calculate other parameters in the same procedure. Study the effect of uh, the seal layer. Redo the simulation without the seal layer. Uh, effect of trampling. Uh, is the daily time scale is good enough or using uh, hourly time scale is better? Especially for modeling runoff. Uh, maybe it's better to uh, to change the stream, to take this pattern of vegetation after the, from the model, take it, take the, the map of the soil water, take it again to the hydros and again to the model and do this loop because the, the calculation in hydros does not take into account the, the vegetation and the soil water change because of the uptake of the vegetation. So this kind of loop maybe be more realistic. Uh, again, as I would say, the, the, the question is, um, what is, what is the degree of the complexity? When I was a physics student, the, the joke was that if you want, if a physicist want to model a cow, so he said, okay, let's start with that the cow is uh, is a circle, or, uh, and then <laughs> move to something like this. And then, um, so what I feel is, is, is to take the parameters and make them much more complicated and space and, and um, time dependent. Is this is the right way or where to stop? Stop here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's already a complicated model because it's three, three spheres, not only one. Uh, time for one, one question. Yes. Um, thank you very much. It's, those are fascinating patterns. It's a beautiful site that you guys are working on. One of the things that, you know, from a soil physicist kind of point of view, um, it, I, I'm, it, it appears, and I'm probably wrong, but it, we're trying to explain lateral patterning and so we take a, a physically-based vertical model, but then it always seems that there's this ad hoc um, lateral components that are thrown in. It's like, well, this is soil, this is soil, this is lateral, diffusion terms, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. There's Hydra's 3D, which can take plants, has full 3D representation, and, and wouldn't be ad hoc laterally. But yeah, so why are we going to these ad hoc representations of soil physics laterally? I, I'm, I'm just new to this area, so I don't understand it. Because uh, this is the same question that you asked. Uh, 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 if it, if yeah. it's, uh, it's how much complexity you want to take into account? Uh, so um, you said to, to use the, the hydro 3D instead of. Uh, well, you have the full soil characterized, and and you could have you, you just use uh, hydro 3D, which is perfectly simple to use. It's the exact same interface. And, and so, and why would not the same soil physics work horizontally as vertically? Why do we have to appeal to, to, to totally different physics? Um, maybe this is, again, for the discussion tonight. No, I think it's, a, no, I mean, it's a, it's a good point, but since we are, did you want to answer something? Um, yeah, maybe it's, it's, it, this is a good uh, direction, I, I think, uh, to connect a more uh, uh, accurate, uh, software or that model all the uh, soil water more accurate in such a, a pattern formation model because the model that we used is a phenomenological model. Is it which model, phenomenological? The, the, you know, part of the, the, the soil diffusion, the, the soil, uh, um, the, the soil water uh, equation has a diffusion term. The surface water also diffusion term. The, the uh, vegetation uh, biomass growth is, is also by diffusion term. And it can be much more complex. 
So it depends what, what is the degree of complexity that you want to, to put inside this model. So there was we one... Know that, we know that it's, it's very, very, very simple to, to use diffusion term and not uh, other term. Okay, yeah. thanks. There was one common question maybe, if it's very short. Yeah, just a quick question. Did you find much relationship on the, during the wet years between uh, deep percolation, I may have missed this in the talk, deep percolation and soil thickness? So that which got out of the root zone, was there a relation between wet years, dry years? Say again, sorry. Uh, the, uh, how much, w during the wetter years, was there much of a relationship between soil thickness and drainage water that left the root zone vertically downward? So that, that, that was essentially lost to the system. La, la, to the, the water loss? Yeah, downward. Uh, in the model or in hydros? Uh, in hydros. Um, better to ask Shai if he can... Uh, because he has done the calculation with hydros, so... Okay. Yeah. Thank you.